I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 5 of my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. On the top are otter tail, uh, straight tail bait strips. Below that are uh, fat cow jig strips, uh, very similar to the otter tails, and I'll be talking about these as we go through the video. The other focus of this video is this rod. Uh, this is brand new. This is uh, called a Sloopster dark matter rod. It comes out of J&H Tackle, Oakdale, Long Island. Uh, yeah, it's, it really is different. It weighs 4.8 ounces, so it's very, very light, yet um, they say it can deadlift 9 pounds, so you can put a tremendous amount of stress on it. So uh, Josh at J&H, um, you know, I told him jokingly I was going to beat on this thing and, and, you know, winch some big bluefish on it and stuff. And, and he said, do what you can. He said, you know, you're not going to break it. And uh, it's rated 6 to pound, six to 12 pound test line. So I've put a Pen 4500 SSV on here, which is definitely a bigger reel than I would normally use for this rod. And I've spooled it with 30 pound test braid. So I've really beefed it up. Um, I'm hoping this trip to get into some big bluefish, but uh, th that's not going to happen. But that's okay. I'm going to work that out. Uh, so, okay, an okay bass here for this uh, backwater creek. Um, and, and this one is caught on an otter tail bait strip that's on a spro bucktail, and it's a spro chrome, actually a gold uh, spro chrome bucktail, uh, yellow hair. So a little bit about the fishing. Uh, normally in this creek I would use 15 pound test line, I'd use a 3 quarter ounce bucktail. Because I'm just basically trying to beat on this rod, I was really hoping to get into some big blues. I'm using 30 pound test braid, so that's definitely way heavier than I'd normally use on the rod, but I, I am kind of trying to abuse this rod. Uh, so going with the 30 pound braid, I've actually needed to go up a little bit on the bucktail weight. Normally I use a three quarter ounce here. I've moved up to a one ounce. It's all fine. It still you know, gets me into the right strike zone and, and works out okay. I've got the drag really tightened down. Uh, I'm just trying to put stress on the rod. And this is a seven foot rod. They also make a seven foot bait caster that looks like uh, it's going to be a very nice fluke rod. So right from the start of the season, uh, I've been doing well on the otter tail bait strips as pork rind substitutes. And one of the concerns was, well, how are they going to stand up to bluefish? And um, I've had bluefish on a couple of trips now, and so far they're holding up real well. They're, they're quite impressive, and um, you know they don't cut them or tear them or anything. And yeah, if you, you know you can't really see well on the video here, but you know, I check it out, and uh, it's in good shape. So I decided if I was going to give the dark matter a really good workout, I was going to need to get out in the kayak, uh, get out in the bay channels with some deeper water where I was pretty sure I could find some big blues, uh, especially near the bottom. Uh, so there's a hit right there where I set the hook and you know, that jig is gone. It just bit right through the 50 pound test fluorocarbon leader. Uh, so I know there's some big blues there. So I've got the dark matter rod all ready to go. And now I have a strip of, um, it's called a jig strip from Fat Cow Fishing, so that's um, something else that's being offered up as a pork rind substitute, and uh, I'll say more about that in a minute. 
A little about the fishing, as I mentioned, I'm in a, a deep channel here. Actually, it's like 15 feet of water. So something I'm being really careful to do is make sure I get near the bottom. So when I cast, I let that sink like until I s feel it tap the bottom. And then as I'm retrieving, you know, on this angle, that jig's going to want to come up. So I'll stop. You know, I'll, I'll let that thing drop back down and really focus on keeping it deep, try to keep it gliding along a couple feet off the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to put some pressure on this rod so I can catch up to this fish. Um, drag is tight. Uh, like I said, 30 pound test braid. So a 30 pound test braid on a rod that's rated for 6 to 12 pound test mono, uh, it's certainly overloaded. And um, yep, I'm just going to put as much pressure as I can on this fish and see what this rod can do. So this is a Berkeley lip grip uh, that I'm reaching for. That's a very inexpensive gripper, and I've had this one, uh, I've had at least eight years, and I really don't do anything, I don't rinse it off or anything, and it holds up well, and it works, and uh, yeah, it's a good alternative to a Boga grip. I have a Boga grip also that I use as a scale, I have a 260, and you know, it's a really, you know, great product, but, um, you know, I think these things are like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something, and um, they work quite well. So you can see clearly he's got that jig strip in his mouth. So the question is, you know, how well is, it, is that going to hold up to bluefish teeth? And uh, it's holding up well. Uh, you know, they can get a little tear here and there, but pretty much it holds together. So I actually like to have a narrower strip. I, it's funny, I never used to cut the pork rind, but uh, both with the otter tails and with these, um, I, I like to trim them and get that narrow strip. And this one, especially for this application with the blues, I'm just going to take a little bit off the, the length. Um, so these, I can't tell the difference in the material between the otter strips and these uh, jig strips, they, they seem to me to be very, very similar in material and everything. Um, the one difference is the shape, and if I had to choose one over the other, I kind of prefer the otter strip. I, um, and I like that because if I take the scissors and, and want to split one of them, um, because the otter is a little bit wider at the bottom of the strip, it just makes two equal strips uh, real nice. But th yeah, they're both good products, very, very similar material they catch and uh, they stand up to bluefish as well. So for me the perfect reel for this rod would be a Pen Clash 3000 because that's a very lightweight reel and this rod weighs like nothing so uh, it, it would be a very very light combination. But as I mentioned I've gone to a heavier reel here because I'm just trying to stress this rod out uh, with the heavier line and um, you know, see what I can do to it.
So, yeah, I guess I'd describe this rod as versatile because it would be a really nice light tackle rod, like, as I mentioned, with a lighter reel, you know, 15 pound test braid, it would be a good light tackle outfit. However, if you wanted to or got into a situation where you're going to tangle with some big stuff and you um, need to beat on it, it's definitely going to take it. And yeah, 4.8 ounces, that's, uh, that's very light. Apparently, besides graphite, there's some material that has something to do with, with the Air Force or whatever that's mixed in. That's what they call the, the dark matter. Um, that's where they get the name for the rod. But yep, it's, Im it's impressive. It's doing well. I don't know what this thing weighs, but it's definitely a teen bluefish. It, it's a, it's big. And again, the strip held up just fine, even on that big fish. All right, this cast is a good example on how uh, I'm going to really try to keep that thing near the bottom. So I'm going to let it settle, settle, settle down, down, down. I'm waiting to feel that little tap on the. As soon as I feel a little tap on the tip, I know I've hit the bottom. I'm getting it moving. Slow to moderate retrieve. But of course, again, that angle's going to bring it up. Let it settle, 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 settle. Start to retrieve again. Keep it going. I'm in about 18 feet of water here. Some more reeling. Again, let it let it drop. Drop, 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 drop. Oh, stop. Fish hit when it was dropping. So when you're letting it drop, uh, you really need to be ready for a hit because a lot of times they'll hit when the jig is falling and that's what that fish did. And that's a one ounce jig, the one ounce uh, Spro Gold. And I managed to find a striper there among the bluefish. Okay, I hope you uh, found this interesting and useful, and if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.